Good morning. It's Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Finding Common Ground. And our scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where Paul writes, Even though I'm a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I'm not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I'm with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I'm with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. The Apostle Paul was brilliant. Even a cursory reading of his letters, you can't miss the way God used the intricate and deep mind of Paul to communicate complex spiritual principles in ways that drive the point home even to the most uncomplicated reader. At the same time, there's depth that can keep you exploring for decades what God gave him to write. Paul was not only intelligent, he was very persuasive, and he found himself in a position of power. Prior to his conversion to Christ, and because of his impressive pedigree as a scholar and his connectedness within the ruling class, Paul had been so trusted by the rulers of Jerusalem, he was commissioned to put a stop to the spread of Christianity. He was even empowered to imprison Christians, which often led to their death. That all turned around on the road to Damascus when Paul met Jesus. Suddenly, Paul's strength turned to weakness, which God then used to impact the whole world. Paul could be caustic and borderline obnoxious with his strong will and being not at all shy about confronting somebody. Several times in Scripture, we find Paul in hot debate with those whose wobbly conviction needed some correction. But we find in today's reading the mysterious opposite of being dogmatic and confrontational. Today, we see the convivial warmth of somebody who cared enough about others to keep his mouth shut at the right times. Paul understood what it was to be filled with power and what it meant to be blind and helpless. As such, he also understood what's needful for a witness of grace to take hold in another's life, identification. Paul understood that for someone's faith to be helped along to receive saving grace, the person who witnesses must learn to be with, not just talk at, a person. Many years ago, as a young believer, I was being taught how to witness. George took me to a home where an elderly couple lived. They'd recently moved to our community and visited our church. They welcomed us in, and George began his memorized and rehearsed speech before we even sat down on the couch. For the next 20 minutes, he led them down the Roman road and eventually coming to the point where it was now or never for their eternal security. Were they going to say yes or no to God? The whole debacle made me feel so uncomfortable watching how uncomfortable the old couple were. They were squirming on their seats. I wanted to rush over to them and give them a hug. But the old man simply said, I think we'll think about that. Well, the next 20 minutes or so, George put on the most amazing display of browbeating someone to the altar I'd ever seen. The man and the woman finally caved and joined George on their knees at the coffee table altar and followed his direction to pray the sinner's prayer. Five minutes later, we were in the car headed home. While driving, George asked, Wasn't that great? I had an answer, but God gave me grace not to pull the trigger. The couple never darkened the doorstep of our church again. For you today... For too many of us, we err on the exact opposite of the abrasive George method. We fail to open our mouths at all. Perhaps it would be different if we took the time to learn how to share our faith. 
but also took the time to get to know about and care for those to whom we'd witness. Then the sharing would be natural and something led by the Spirit, as opposed to claiming another evangelistic scalp to list on the church membership rolls. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.